Show. I'm your host, Cindy Palos, here with co-host Kathy Takuchi from Captivating Journeys. Aloha. Hi, Cindy. Always good to see you. You too. So he's only locally uh, produced radio show on travel in the state, and I am really honored you brought a special guest with you today, Leanne Pletcher, who's Director of Public Relations and Marketing for the Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau. Welcome, Leanne. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's um, it's a huge, huge subject, and we'll be talking to you in just a minute. I kind of just wanted to go over what's going on with Captivating Journeys, because you're always so busy. You're dressed for summer, Kathy. I it's know. I, I love there. summer. Summer is my favorite time of year, and I, I don't really want to be in the office. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's partly because you live in Haiku. Yes. But, <laughs> um, that's but, true. But there's a lot going on, of course, a lot of summer, summer travel plans. Everything kind of goes into a little bit of a different gear at this point. Um, like we were saying Alaska travels are already kind of planned for this at this mm-hmm. point, mostly. And you have some exciting other things going on. We were talking about the trip to Korea that's uh, an amazing deal that is still available, I think, right? Yeah, we're um, partnering with Hawaiian Airlines and Panda Travel with a escorted Christmas shopping tour uh, November 7th to the 12th of this year, and it's six days, four nights. And... Uh, be a fun, I think, a fun girls' trip, even though guys can go, too. Well, it's yeah. it's shop, <laughs> shopping galore at the right time of year, but on top of that, the price is unbeatable. It's fifteen ninety nine per person based on double occupancy, and that includes round-trip airfare from Maui. It includes the hotel for four nights, includes breakfast every day. There's a few dinners and I think a couple lunches and tours. So. And this is done in coordination with the Hawaiian Airlines. Mm-hmm. And I, I really wish I could go, but I cannot. But um, I'd like to go. I think it would be fun. I, you, 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 <laughs> just anyone mention any travel anywhere, and I want to go. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. you see me do this. Like I want to go. Um, but it, you know, it's something because I have never really visited South Korea much. I was at the airport, I think, twice. And that's not considered really being. Yeah. <laughs> you can do shopping, but you can't all. really. Yeah, yeah, and and um, the airport is considered to be completely redone over and very nice. But to actually experience what South Korea is about, it's very interesting. But we always encourage travel of any kind because it is expanding of your mind. You actually get to meet people. You learn a lot. You you did expand your horizon. You see all the similarities people all around the world have. So, mm-hmm. um, and Hawaiian Airlines has a direct flight there. It's from right Honolulu. From, but this one is actually you also on this one you leave from Maui, right? Yeah, Maui to Honolulu mm-hmm. and then Honolulu to Incheon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a very good price. Right? It is excellent price with it includes everything. some breakfasts and uh, breakfast your every tours. day. Yeah, mm-hmm. tours, yeah. And some meals. Yeah, a uh, few dinners. Yeah, and um, tours. So it'll be doesn't fun. include your shopping. Does not, not your, include you have your to shopping. Bring shopping money. <laughs> you bring your, you yeah. have to bring your shopping money and an yeah. extra suitcase, or buy the suitcase there. <laughs> I, I I was just reading an article though. I just saw it right as we sat down, but it says uh, that air travel is about to become more expensive, uh-huh. according to the airline CEO. And uh-huh. um, so if you're planning. For summer or holiday travel, you should buy your tickets now, and that's because, uh, in part, due in part to escalating fuel prices. So, and don't get me started we haven't on that. Seen the fuel? No go one's up. talking yeah. about fuel. I saw a gas station the other day going up to four dollars and fifteen cents a gallon for the regular. I was like, what? That's, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it always bothers me because when you hear in the news about rising fuel prices and the prices are up to $3.15, I'm going, no, not on Maui. and Maui, it's a lot more, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, it's all, we know there's all kinds of ways to manipulate that. But um, that is something that we have to um, be aware of. And if that's going to happen, it's like, when do they, I mean, I don't know how much time you have when you hear something like that. If it's a week, two weeks, whatever. They don't say. They don't say. Yeah. Yeah, but that's um, something you have to take into consideration. Mm-hmm. Definitely. That don't expect prices to go down. They are expected to go up. The thing is that t- typically, right, 
summertime is cost more and you always believe that the prices go down in September or October when kids go back to school and the families are through with travel. Generally. Generally, yeah. mm-hmm. if you're going to go to Europe or some other place, you try to plan it not for the summer, but you try to plan for later in the year. However, I mean, there are places such as now that are so overcrowded in the summer, like Ireland and, and Italy um, and places in Italy, that now people have started to go more in September and October because they don't want to fight the crowds in the summer. Right. So that's kind of also Those are brought going, up. bringing, yeah. I yeah. mean, Ireland now says one of the busiest months is September and Even, October. Yeah, I was talking to um, Viking Cruises because I'm planning an escorted trip for 2020. And we were, I was looking at different dates and September which used to be a lower time, is mm-hmm. now higher than summer. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, so so it's, it, you know, it's yeah. kind of like, well, I mean, we'll talk yeah. with Leanne about this, but it used to be the same way on Maui. It used mm-hmm. to be, oh, you got, you're going to go at this time of year because if you go at that time of year, it's more expensive for hotels. But a lot of this is all leveling the playing field because there's conventions and other things, that, and hotels are aware of this. So it's kind of the, the playing field isn't as easy to predict anymore, I think. So mm-hmm. it's all that's why having a travel agent like Kathy Takushi at Captivating Journeys is a very good thing because you know what? I mean, I follow this. I love travel, and it's really, and I'm even a travel agent just for myself and a couple of friends. But, but you know what? I can't figure it out anymore for me it's it's way too complicated to figure it is it's like a huge thing to figure out now you know mm-hmm. so if you call Kathy Takushi at 244-1414 um she'll help you figure it out or and Tina then, or Tina. To Tina and I have to say <laughs> when you get deals like this deal you know for Korea South Korea um for fifteen ninety nine, including your airfare and your hotel and lots of the meals and uh, some of the tours as well. You know, that's one of the best. Sometimes the package deals are unbeatable. If you were going to do this on your own individually, it'd be very, very hard to get a price like this. It, yeah, that's true. I, I actually priced somebody wanted to come here in a couple of weeks, and I priced just airfare only versus an air and a car package. Mm-hmm. So it was cheaper to do the air in the car so ba- than doing it by itself. So they got basically a car for free. And sometimes it's mm-hmm. air, car, car and, and hotel yes. are also unbeatable mm-hmm. because this is because you can do it in the group rate. And there's certain blocks already put on hold for those those groups, right? Yeah, the, the wholesalers, they package, um, they work out discounts with the the suppliers and mm-hmm. they get special rates, so... Well, this mm-hmm. is where we, we turn to our special guest, and it's so good to have you in the studio, Leanne. Um, marketing, I, I understand marketing, and I understand trying to get PR out Then It's a huge, huge job, and it's so important for the islands. Um, you know, Kathy and I have often talked about how what a huge um, boon tourism is and how much money it brings into the islands, and you know, it's funny because we each get in our own little job and our own little patterns and situations. And if we don't go, I don't even get over to the hotels very often. I'm so busy. It's got to be a special occasion to get over to Wailea or Kanapali, right? But but we forget um, how much money is coming in from tourism. Um, do you keep, you? I saw a great article in the paper. What was this on Saturday's uh, Maui News? said, no cold shoulder from Maui visitors in April. And this was an eye-opening article, very well written, from Brian Perry um, about um, how much tourism is happening and what's going on. It said, total expenditures from Maui Island grew 11.3% to forty no $413.3 million. $413.3 million in April, as compared with the same um, month last year. That's an increase of 12.4% um, to a total of $1.87 billion. My gosh. You know, I mean, we just, again, we we, mm-hmm. we sometimes don't realize what a huge impact that is. 
Oh, it is, definitely. I mean, visitors are such a big part of our, our economy here in Maui, and Maui County, for that matter. And mm-hmm. you're right, it, it's been increasing, which is terrific, which it, it just helps everybody, you know, from your hotel worker to um, you and I, you know, being able to talk about it. So, the no, we're excited about it. Restaurants, they the go, activities. They go to the shopping centers. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I see when the NCL comes in, you know, I, I see them all walking right over to the Queen Commoner Center or the Maui mall right you see them you see right. them in the mornings and the afternoons and they're out there you know and a lot of times the roberts bus or people pick them up and take them some go to haleakala and some go mm-hmm. to up to Iao valley and there's just so many beautiful Anna. things to share on this island you know between the culture and the the tropical you know the the temperature and being able to go swim in the ocean and and i think because we all live here, sometimes you, you I, I try not to take it for granted. We but do. When people do. come, you know, for the first time and they've, you know, they've saved up for a long time to get here, it's just, it's fun to see how much, how wild they are by everything. So that, that's, that's really important too, that we all appreciate the fact that they're, they're taking something in that's so beautiful that's about our destination too. That wow factor cannot be discounted, and and I'm so glad you brought that up because I've been here 30 years now, and and I mean I remember before I moved here 30 years ago, I'd come about once or twice a year for about five or six years before I moved here, and I you know was like that was like a you know that love affair you have that keeps drawing you back, and it's interesting because each island obviously has its own draw. Mm-hmm. Some people say, oh, I want to go to Kauai. Some people want to go to the nightlife on Oahu. But it seems like a lot of people who are originally going to Oahu decide for their second or third trip if they've already been to Oahu. And a lot of people are repeat visitors. Mm-hmm. And they go, well, you know, I was there and that was that. And I want something different that's more authentic, you know. And, and I think that Maui offers mm-hmm. enough of, and, and this is where I'll let you dot, dot, dot. We have culture, we have beauty, we have nature, we have hiking, we have an interesting balance without necessarily being just all about nightclubs and nightlife, right? That's right. No, I think there's a lot of diversity on this island, and really you can find what you'd like to do, and everything's fairly close. It's not like you have to drive for hours and hours to get from from one activity to the next, and I agree, it's everything from the zip lining to just the hiking to being able to out to go out to watch whales, if you want to learn how to surf, you can do that. But if you're um, looking for the cult, or excuse me, the dining side too, I mean, mm. we really have kind of a nice emergence of the the foodies, you know, well, coming to this island, Absolutely. and a lot of great chefs and the restaurants. I don't think a lot of people appreciate the fact that that our whole culinary scene here is really growing too. So that's another another great activity for people to to enjoy and the the variety of the types of accommodations we have it's a good point it's a good point um we, there's an interesting balance of course i just saw an article in the paper this morning about what might be happening with airbnbs and certain things that happen like that and that sometimes affects it as well but when you have happy people in hotels when they're pretty much at capacity or 87 percent or 90 percent mm-hmm. I don't think they mind as much. <laughs> right, as right. It's nice to, to have be. those options. Or people can go camp, you know, as long as they get the right permits and whatnot. And there are the smaller hotels that people can go to. And, and like you were talking about with the cruise ships, yeah. you know, it's another great way to experience the islands, too. So when I have to, we're kind of all connected, obviously. It's one state, but, you know, as people realize when they get here, each island is so completely different. I was talking to Kathy and many of my friends, and we were all shocked how many people we knew that were Facebook friends or otherwise that knew, well, yeah, we know you're in Hawaii. How's that volcano affecting you? I'm so sorry. And we're going, yeah, but I'm on Maui. And know that that's, that's, we feel for them, but no, it doesn't really affect us here. And these are people we mm-hmm. know that were even getting mixed up and getting the islands confused. So obviously, when something happens, and every night you're seeing these unbelievable pictures of mm-hmm. the lava and the you know what's going on and the smoke and the ash and everything lays, um, 
there's obviously some confusion out there in s- people's minds if they can't even remember people I know what island. <laughs> oh, on, right? right, right. No, there is, and and I know the Hawaii Tourism Authority as well as the Island of Hawaii Visitors Bureau has been making a very diligent effort of getting the communication out there about what's really happening. And if you go to the Hawaii Tourism Authority website, there's a special alert section. It has all the different links that give you kind of the kill away of facts as well as sort of a VOG, um, for lack of a better word, sort of, you know, alternate or, you know, to it's, show what, what the levels good. are. I've been and just looked and actually yeah, very, very, very well, up to date by the day and in information with right. links to everything. So they've been trying to get that word out. And I know it's as far as Hawaii still being very much of a destination that people should still come. I know it's been in the New York Times. It was on the Kelly and Ryan show. And they've all been really helping to promote the fact that this uh, Kilauea's activity is really just a very, very small portion of uh, Island of Hawaii. Actually, I lived there for 14 years, so I'm very familiar with the island. And you could never see it from the, you know, the Kona side. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a shame people are, are diverting their travel plans when there is so much else to explore on the island of Hawaii, as well as all the other islands. It's it's really not affecting, you know, Maui County or Maui or Molokai or Lanai or um, even Oahu or Kauai, certainly. But, uh, well, so. we, I have to say the Hawaii tourism, uh, is his name Ross over there? Oh, uh, Ross Birch. He's yeah. with. He's the um, executive director for the Island of Hawaii Visitors Bureau. He's been he's been on TV and mm-hmm. he's been making a statement, and it was shocking mm-hmm. to hear him say fifty percent um, down. Yes. Uh, that is that's quite a heavy, that's significant, a very significant. And he said a lot of it was because of NCL not stopping in Kona, right? As well as Hilo, and I, some people are going, "Well, gosh, could they stop in Kona still or not?" You know, but mm-hmm. um, it's when it, when there's something that's impactful like that. Are you ever contacted? Or it's a white tourism. Uh, and generally contacted about things like that, or do they have any input? We have had some um, just inquiries from visitors that were um, planning their trips to, to Maui and, and whatnot, asking if it's affecting our islands and if we've been, you know, sharing that, you know, there's no impact and and refer them to these websites we were just talking about. And as far as uh, HTA and the Island of Hawaii Visitors Bureau, there's been a lot of communication among all the islands to make sure we're all getting the the word out that, yes, Hawaii is open for business and trying to welcome people to come. We, I, I know we all keep a track, especially you, Kathy, um, because it's really important about the flights. And what thing is really interesting is, is when more flights are available and mm-hmm. when there are more flights coming directly into Maui, um, you see more tourism happening, and there mm-hmm. is talk about Southwest Airlines right. and others. And have you seen that as an impact and part of the reason that tourism's up here? Oh, definitely. I mean, the, the lift into the islands definitely will affect the amount of tourism that we have, just c- because it's easier for people, especially when there's direct flights, to get to the islands. But we do see spikes in the uh, the amount of visitors when those flights become available. And I believe with Southwest coming in that that, that will definitely happen, too, especially with the inner island. I think that's going to be very helpful for local residents as well as visitors. Mm-hmm. So so when we see this, you, you keep track, and I know you keep a lot of, it's amazing how this, the statistics are pretty mind-boggling, actually. Mm-hmm. How, how, mm-hmm. I mean, just in this mm-hmm. article alone, right. there's like lots of statistics <laughs> here. Um, obviously, tourism's changing as people are changing. And um, where it used to be, people used to just go to a hotel and say they want to go to a hotel and lay by the pool. Um, I think those days have pretty much changed a lot, and there's certainly mm-hmm. a lot of, I mean, you see it too, Kathy. Families, when you're coming back and you see the whole, whole plane full of families coming to Maui, isn't it blow your mind sometimes how they're yeah. bringing everyone, the whole family? Little babies. That, yeah. That was, I right. never wanted to travel when my kids <laughs> were little. <laughs> like, I mean, there are oh, young, young people, right. families. Yeah. And, and there's Baby just, moons. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and proudly when I, and I go from here to the mainland, I see people wearing their... Maui t-shirts or their, you know, flip-flops or they're saying their olakides or they're doing the signature. And there's a bit of, you can see the pride, you know, that they're going to mm-hmm. say that they were on Maui. So when we see this, how do you continue to evolve with the changing evolution of, of definitely the why people want to travel? 
Well, I think especially for families with the resorts, they come up with a lot of different like new activities, especially with the whole sort of sustainability um, movement that's going on right now and the making sure that they understand the environment and how uh, how we all interact with it. So I know a couple of the resorts have come up with uh, like uh, programs where there's volunteerism, you know, where you get to volunteer to help with uh, some reef type of, I don't know, I wouldn't say a reef cleanup, but as far as understanding the reefs and all this, the new uh, sunscreen that's out that's uh, reef safe. That's a biggie, huh? So that's a very big one. A lot of the resorts and activities are starting to just use that product to hand out to their their guests. And That's not going into effect for another year or two, though, right? The no, I think the, yeah, it's but a, a, a number of them have already adopted that, well, good which, because is, which it, is great. It was shocking how the damage happened, and most people didn't even realize that mm-hmm. they put on suntan lotion mm-hmm. that's killing a reef, you know? I mean, right. you know, who knew, right? Right. So and and then a number of the activities have to do with um, going out and just learning about the uh, the environment too. That um, and it's not as much as sitting around the pool as you were saying before. To get out on a outrigger canoe and learn about the culture as well as um, the the nature that's that's here on Maui. I think that's really true, and I'm seeing a lot more. I mean, I remember when I saw those hike Maui vans years ago. You'd see one or two. And somehow I went to one must have been one of their sites. I must have seen they had ten new hike Maui vans. I'm going, mm. oh my <laughs> gosh, did they grow? Right, right. And then with Haleakala, with the the fact that you need to make a reservation to go for sunrise now, and I think that's been really helpful to. And that way, the people that do go can really enjoy the experience and not have as many people up there with them. And it also helps with their environmental impact that not as many cars are up there at once. And so that that's been a, a nice change. And also encouraging people to go up for sunset. Yes, as well. I not, like not just the better. sunrise. Yeah, I like sunset better. <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah, you, and it's not as cold. Yeah, you know, it gets yeah. cold fast. So, but right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I, I think, as you were saying, all the activities that the resorts and even the activity partners are now offering are are changing up a bit. And there's a lot of wellness types of um, um, activities too. Mm. And and of course, people do like their spas. Mm-hmm. The spa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, and then that the mm-hmm. spa factor is is huge. When you get calls, Kathy, do you see what people talk to you about, what they're going to do when they come here? What do you see trending over the last few years of what people are interested in doing when they're coming to Maui? Um, I, our clients really, um, I don't see, really see much of a trend. They just want to come. Um, they might do a couple activities. They, Of course, they want to see the whales. If it's during whale season, they always want to do a sunset cruise. Um, so. I do get a lot of requests for Pearl Harbor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for, for what? Oops. Pearl Harbor. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, like they they always want to do like a couple of days on Oahu. So, right. Um, right. So that's interesting. Pearl, we'll put Pearl you on Harbor. a plane. <laughs> yes. So we're all say, oh, why don't you do a couple, maybe two days on Oahu and then come to Maui? Interesting. Yeah. I didn't realize that Pearl Harbor. But is that's going to be effective because they actually shut down indefinitely. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Let's wait yeah. till that. And the other thing too is farm tours. That's yeah. a good thing to mm-hmm. remember. Yeah, we I have a lot of requests for farm tours. Is Charlene Kalhana doing doing this? She does for a that, while. and we've been in like OO Farms and Kumu Farms, so uh, we, we'll uh, go uh, out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're they're we'll beautiful. Do those. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good uh-huh. point. And uh-huh. people go to the lavender farm, of course, and the lavender and farm, of mm-hmm. course, and a little on the more adventuresome side is like paragliding. Ocean vodka has become very oh right popular. right ocean vodka. Mm-hmm. And now that pow vodka and Hali'i Maile. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And then, which leads us to, I mean, how big is the wedding business? It's huge here on the islands. It is. And that, you know, it's uh, the whole destination, you know, wedding and the honeymoons. It, that's something that's been so, like, one-on-one with Maui for so long that it you don't necessarily have to promote that as much. I mean, not that not not that we don't, but I think people associate Maui with getting married and also um, having a honeymoon. So it's sort of a natural progression. So we're trying to it's you know, trying to change up, you know, what we focus on. And Bower Knowles is and Bowery Knowles is really huge is strong because people mm-hmm. want to come to Maui for their second honeymoon. Sometimes it's their twenty fifth anniversary or their tenth and 
They bring mm-hmm. the whole family, and mm-hmm. the, I saw a lot of our renewals happening. Yeah, and the destination weddings is something that that we like to you know talk to people about because that is that's bringing the families and all their friends out, and do see more and more of that here too. We work with um, a few of the wedding coordinators, and they refer their um, clients to us who need mm-hmm. help with travel arrangements. We get like two, three requests a day. Really? For yeah, it's. A, Amazing, and, mm-hmm. there, and there's a ton of wedding coordinators on Maui. There uh, are, yeah. It's <laughs> they're like realtors almost. You know, there's so many of them, and they're all. Yeah, I mean, true. I'm sure they're some all very are busy. busy. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. So well, and it goes from yeah. very very small budget um, on the beach, to very mm-hmm. small. Yeah, they mm-hmm. want the cheapest way they can it's do very it. Very elaborate. Right? Yeah. To yeah. ones that are like, I mean, you could buy a house for that, folks. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the memory. <laughs> <right>? Yes. <laughs> The plates, the settings. Right, right. They want to oh, I've seen people bring whole, I mean, 30, 40 people, sometimes more people out. Oh, I mean, you know, yeah. they do the whole thing, you and know. the bride and groom will pay for them. Right. Yeah. Some of them. Oh, My I, husband and I eloped to Hawaii. Well, that's the best way, I think. But I know I used to do wedding videos in the ministry, and one time I actually did a wedding where the couple's family owned um, a resort, you know, a hotel or something in Las Vegas, and they rented out the Maui Ocean Center, the whole center. Oh, nice. They had a wedding underwater with the sharks and the stingrays in the tank with them. Oh, and we wow. videotaped it. And then they had that outside area up there. They had the yes. whole reception with about, I don't know, there's about 100 people they brought mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. That. And I'm like, how much would that cost? <laughs> It's amazing. Very yeah. unique. Yeah. I know. Very but pe- unique. But people yeah. do like mm-hmm. unique if they can get it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. and more and more they're doing the unique. And right. now, of course, it's drones. Let's get some drone shots of this or that. You know, Especially that. with the influx of social media, they want something different, you know, to post mm-hmm. or different yeah. photos. And- I hadn't been up to Ulupalakua Ranch in a long time. And I was up there, you know, because it looked like it was raining the other week when I was up country. So oh, let's go to Thompson Ranch, you know. So I said, as long as we're here, let's go down to Ulupulu. I hadn't been to Ulupalaku. I used to go over there a lot, but I hadn't been there in a while. Mm-hmm. So I went and had, you know, one of the meals there at their store. Mm-hmm. I was shocked how crowded it was. And then I realized there's some reserved table. going, I didn't know you did reserve benches, but it was from tour people who were right. doing tours up there. And they take them and they have them get their mm-hmm. elk burger or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and then they take them across the street to the winery, mm-hmm. right? And, of course, it's gorgeous up there, and mm-hmm. the views are fantastic, right? And the people were really happy. It felt like a really personal thing to be able to go to the old ranch. They get the pictures where the old statues up there, mm-hmm. right? And oh, sure. Their thing. <laughs> and, and so I think the mm-hmm. uniqueness, people like the uniqueness of something now, and it seems like that's really mm-hmm. kind of taking off something to Something that degree, someone right? else hasn't experienced or that, you know, at least in their close circles, you know, that they want to come do. Yeah, and, and we I'll, offer a lot of that here in Maui. Well, that's true, and it's some, mm-hmm. somewhat bragging rights, I guess. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, oh, I got to do this or that. You know, and it, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how so do true. you stay on top with all the trends and things like that going on? You know, we're we're very fortunate. We have a couple of different ways of communicating with our partners. We put out a a newsletter called Message from Maui Nui. We reach out to everyone to find out what's new, and that's a great way for us to get that information and then turn it around put it in an e-newsletter and send it out. And uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's impressive how many people do reach out to us with, you know, what they have going on on a continual basis. And then we'll, uh, I think just by virtue of, of what we do, we find out, you know, about what, uh, what might be new and trending. Like the Maui Ocean Center you're just referring to, they, they've just, they're building a new uh, dome that's going to be a theater that's going to be talking about the whales and it just sort of appeared i think two nights ago it just i drove by yesterday i'm like oh there it is so so things like that you know that really helps no absolutely it does and i guess there's also the communication between it still amazes me some people i mean more and more you're seeing more people ahead of time going and planning their vacation online Mm -hmm. They do a lot of research online, right? I mean, they probably come to you, Kathy, and say, I heard about this or I saw this. Is this good? And they probably want your opinion as well. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people do the homework, look at what's going, and then they look at the reviews, right? They go to TripAdvisor, right. <laughs> and they check out the reviews on the hotels and the tours and the things. Mm-hmm. So people like to be kind of armed with information 
and then kind of follow it up. Oh, sure. Right. And we we, uh, host quite a few journalists and social media influencers uh, that come in, and we'll do even organized press trips with a group of them. So when we put those together, we reach out to our partners for the different the accommodations and the different types of activities that they could offer. So that gives us a good education on what's out there then, and then we'll find out from them what their experiences are or if we get to experience it. And that way we can share that with our, our visitors that are asking about what to do. I always wondered how the influence of things like Hawaii Five O or, or any of the big <laughs> movies, you know, that happen, or even the ads you see sometimes because they mm-hmm. spend big budgets on those ads. I if that has an influence, um, you know, and then there's the golf tournaments, of course. Sure, right? I was going to say the golf. If Century it's golf snowing tournament. in the East Coast and you see Kapalua and it's beautiful mm-hmm. blue day, you know, blue sky, green grass, you know. Do do those still have an influence on people's... uh, I I believe so, especially with the events, like you're mentioning with Century and like the Xterra, the Kapalua Wine Food Festival that's coming up, um, like the Maui Marathon. That brings these people in to not only experience them, but the ones that are televised, like Xterra and -hmm. and the Century. Um, I know when my husband and I were still living on the mainland, we'd always tune in to Hawaii Five O and some of those shows because <laughs> yeah. we're like, oh, we wish we were there. But they they do try to air these, you know, when it is colder yeah. on the mainland to entice them to think, boy, that looks great. You know, we need to we need to go. But we do find also that when people come, they'll want to go to that place, you know, like on Oahu where Hawaii Five O was filmed. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, um, and this, I think there's tours they have right, there you can right. Go. And, and then of course um, we can't discount. Um, uh, we didn't even talk about the surf community and, and some of the events, the kiteboarding and the different things that, of right. course, is a huge, All the contests and, huge event mm-hmm. that bring people in mm-hmm. around the world. Then, and I know we've talked about this, Kathy, that the cultural effect of people. Um, I know so many musicians who go to Japan and will sell out. I mean, huge halls there, you know, and some have halals there. And there's been this huge, over the last 10 years, mm-hmm. influence of the Japanese loving the Hawaiian dance and the Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian music. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, for a while it was like, okay, all the Japanese tourists go to Oahu. And I have to say I was there a year ago. Oh, no, no, it wasn't even a year ago. And I was like, I really was amazed how many <laughs> how many Asian tourists were actually on Oahu. And, of course, with the prince and princess there tomorrow, it's like a huge deal as well. But with the, the music influence of all the wonderful cultural groups here, mm-hmm. there has been, it seems like, a very big increase in, in um, wanting to know more about Hawaiian culture. Mm-hmm. No, that's very true. Like you said, with the hula, certainly you do see a lot of the the more the international groups coming in, and and we actually do host a number of media from the different international countries too that come in. We're seeing more from Asia, and a lot from Europe too. But they all want to learn that that uh, you know that side of of Hawaii mm-hmm. from its I history. I think that, that brother is somewhere over the rainbow. Who knows the impact of that mm-hmm. song? But that's one of the biggest songs in Germany, mm-hmm. right? Oh, and, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. No, the Germans German? absolutely mm-hmm. love that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and of course, there's all this whole long, you know, standing spreckles, spreckles. There is a German con- kind of connection that, that goes way back. But, but, but and, that, and again, I think that's wonderful because, you know, there's things like the Merry Monarch Festival. But then there's also wonderful Lao and, and events that happen here. Um, right. As well, right? We actually, just this past weekend, um, we were on Molokai for the Kahula Pico Festival. And that brought in, uh, which was a, a celebration of the, the start of hula, and that brought in halals from Australia, um, Japan. Really? Right, right. So they there was an international draw there, too, which was uh, And yeah, we was don't always incredible. see or hear about that, Mm-mm. but it, but it, it mm-hmm. is, and it's, it's, it's a very precious jewel that has to be preserved, right? I mean, yes, and, and it's all about a, the storytelling, yeah. Right, and the reality of it. And I think people expect more even out of a luau now than they may have. You know, <laughs> right. <years. laughs> I mean, I think people know the difference yeah. between tiny bubbles, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and what used to be okay as a mm-hmm. luau versus what is what you're really going to get from it. Yeah, they really want right? to understand the history of it. And again, like you said, it's not just the tiny bubbles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Memory. I, I just received a call um, last week and from this girl from Molokai, and she's doing a 
cultural retreats here on Maui. Nice. I don't know if you... Uh-huh. And yeah, she's actually coming to my office tomorrow. We're going to talk. But she's... Per, I think she just started. She had one in April, and mm-hmm. then she's going to have one at the end of the year. And Very nice. Yeah. So that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. So I should have her contact you yes. so that she can be in the <laughs> newsletter. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's yeah. go the opposite way. We've talked a lot about tourists coming in and what they like, but... How do you go out and promote tourism? And I know there's a huge concerted effort for you to reach out to people. And, and, and how do you go out and spread the word? Oh, how do we go out and pre- uh, So we, uh, through our public relations efforts, it's a matter of doing our, our media blitzes where we go to the mainland and we bring all the information from all of our partners and and whatnot, what's going on on Maui, and share that with a lot of the journalists uh, that are in sort of the top market cities like L.A., San Francisco, New York, and tell the story of what's happening here in the hopes that they'll write an article or or maybe even come experience the island. So that we do that twice a year. And then we have press trips where we bring journalists in onto the island to experience what we have to offer. Uh, we're going to be doing one in September where we have a group, actually, where we're all going to do the HANA Relay. Wow. So that'll be like a first-hand experience of, um, of what Maui's all about. And then we'll do another one uh, later in the year where we'll go to uh, Lanai and Molokai to do the uh, different, um, to experience the accommodations and uh, the uh, off-roading and whatnot on both of those islands and the culture as well. So it's it's a lot of, you know, reaching out to the journalists and the social media influencers is becoming a bigger part of what we do every day, too, There's so to get the of word them. out. How do you decide who? I mean, because they all say they're, but I mean, it's all about numbers, but you have to wonder how real. So how do you know who's the real we bloggers really have, or the ones that just say they're you? Right. No, we, we look at their, their analytics, you know, mm-hmm. to see how actually how engaged they are on their photos and the comments and, and their photos themselves, too, to see if they align with what, what our kind of um, uh, requirements are. When mm-hmm. we when we do our and we also are very active on social media. We have our um, accounts on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, and our social marketing manager Bridget. She works on all three islands every day, and we get a, we have a lot of interaction with people that way. And people, on the marketing, people love the pictures. Oh, they uh, do those pretty <laughs> pictures. <laughs> those and on the marketing pretty. side, we have print and digital advertising campaigns that we work with Hawaii Visitors Conventions Bureau on. So we're in publications like Bon Appetit and um, Cooking Light. We've been on HDTVs and then in a lot of the movie theaters actually on the mainland to advertise. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. How big is the Condé Nast Island of the Year? Do the people really go by the the awards and things like that? Does that make a difference? It's interesting. I think it does. Mm -hmm. I really do because Maui had received that award for so many years and it's just not something nice to put you know in our um on our brochures and when we go out especially our salespeople that go out and talk to the uh, uh different groups that are thinking of bringing their their business to the island to say it's number one there, there's something about that i think that sort of you know makes people kind of perk up when you're talking about a great destination well you, everyone likes taglines, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it's easy right? if, you, if you put that in there, you right. know, people remember that, and it's something that, that mm-hmm. does get attention. There's people that I've been watching Condé Nast more and more going towards their emails and social media mm-hmm. and, and less and less towards the magazine, right? Well, right. I've seen the price of the magazine go down. <laughs> this right. Cheaper and cheaper. There's but still the people that like to, you know, pick up the newspaper and the magazine. But you're right, the, the digital <laughs> side is much, much bigger now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely um, that going on as well. And, of course, it's the reputation is so, so, so important, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's golden. That's something that really you have to keep an eye on, I imagine. I have a question because I've always wondered how it works because there's so many people that um, are very good at understanding the marketing of things. But then I see... And wonder why no one knows about things like going to the EL Theater. Because I keep thinking people would like to learn about 
the local kind of what's going mm-hmm. on with locals more, you know, and how do they get the word out about what's going on at the Mac or the EL Theater or what's going on with some of these these I mean of course, you know, it's always interesting when I go to Made on Maui and, right. and check that out, you know, mm-hmm. because here's like, you know, they get ten thousand people. Mm-hmm. And you kind of go, well, how many are visitors or how many local? Usually you can tell uh, by looking, right? Right. But, I mean, so how, and the Maui Film Festival mm-hmm. is coming mm-hmm. up the 13th through the 17th. Um, how do we kind of blend um, the really events that a lot of local people love mm-hmm. in and get the word out to the people that are internationally thinking about coming here so they actually come for them, some of those events? I think for a lot of those events, like Maui Film Festival and, and whatnot, they, they do their own marketing efforts, and, and we do our best at the Visitors Bureau to include that in that um, that e-newsletter I mentioned and also on the Go Hawaii dot com slash Maui website. There's a whole events page oh, okay. that people can put their information on. So that's that's a big part of that. But with the um, uh, the Made in Maui festival, we were just actually talking about that yesterday in the promotion of that. And with that, we'll, we're going to try to put that on the. Uh, there's a digital billboard now above the luggage carousel at the airport mm-hmm. and. Maui Visitors Dude, that's Bureau. That's all being all being marketed there at the airport now, isn't it? Las so Vegas. we're it's yeah. All yeah. Down I mean, over. currently we Maui Visitors Bureau has a slot on there that we have some safety messaging <laughs> on, good, and good. so we'll we'll partner with Made in Maui to to put some a message up there during the week of the festival or the um, event mm-hmm. to help promote that. And it's with things like that, you want to capture the visitor very close to when they're coming, if not mm. if they don't already have their feet on the ground here. And so the, it's, yeah, it's, it, there's so many events here and, and festivals that you want to try to capture people's attention on it. But it, it, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, but How anything we can do. How important is the concierge with that? Extremely, yes. Concierge, they're probably the best tool because they're, they're one-on-one with the visitors and the guests because, at the you hotels. Know, they are kind of your go-to. It's mm-hmm. like, well, what's going on tonight? You know, what's happening? And if someone, right. you may not even know, like mm-hmm. the film festival is going on or something mm-hmm. else is going on. And if you hear, well, gosh, that's just up the way here. And we can see this. And that's a real event that is like, what's oh, going sure. on? Oh, yeah. sure. I think a lot of our partners are very good about that and, and distributing, you know, the rack cards, the brochures, and, mm-hmm. and having the concierge even experience what they're what they're having or what they're offering, and that helps you know bring it top of mind. But the I think the concierge, work, don't they? They do. They Isn't do. It much as they seem much old school, they I still do. work. Because <laughs> so sometimes I'll see people and they're just going through and picking up all those ones. I guess right, gosh, that's right. They do. I guess work. that's still still. We have happening. a whole. Um, wall of them at our offices at the Maui Visitors Bureau. <laughs> oh, we should mention where your offices are because yes. you know what? I mean, a lot uh-huh. of people live here and they don't even know where right? you are. Currently, we're in the old mill yard on uh, 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 Wheelie Pa Loop. The circle there. Mm-hmm. Goes the circle from the post uh-huh. office. Very yeah. close to Sam Sato's. Yeah. So, so when people go to you, and I'm sure businesses mm-hmm. that are starting want probably to go to you for information and advice as well, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, between people coming to the island and businesses too, or mm-hmm. so. What do you tell them? What's the what's some of the hints you would give a local business to reach out to? And and, and I'll tell you, we can't discount that because right. there are people traveling around more. That most a lot of people are getting their cars; they're not just staying at the hotels. Mm-hmm. And a lot of business would love to tap into some of the visitors, you know, and, and get some oh, of sure. that visitor money. Sure. So how, what would you recommend to reach them? Well, a, a big part of it is, you know, if they, if they do come to the Maui Visitors Bureau, is um, it'd be helpful if they become members mm-hmm. of the I'm Hawaii a member. Visitor. Yep. Yeah, he's <laughs> a member. <laughs> because should, then, you, be then we member. can work with yeah. you to, you know, to help promote or give you those marketing and PR opportunities and uh not just here on Maui, but there's, you know, through the whole Hawaii Visitor Conventions Bureau. Because there's a, a meeting point. or there's a planner, a vacation planner that you would have be a listing in. Uh-huh. That's both online and, and a print publication. And then, you know, resources like ourselves at the, um, there's 11 of us in our office. Wow. To You're help. big. Mm-hmm. We are big. <laughs> I mean, no, because I mean, so, I know a lot of nonprofits that just have one person. Right, right. No, <laughs> we're very, very fortunate. So, you know, it. For us to be a resource, it's helpful if they do become a member. 
How much does it cost to be a member? It, it just depends on the level of your business. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's different prices yeah, depending I don't know on how big or large. exact yeah. answer to okay. that. But, but this mm-hmm. is something, this is mm-hmm. valuable for a lot of people because mm-hmm. I deal with a lot of local businesses that would love to reach out to more mm-hmm. visitors, but I don't think most of them have even ever thought of talking to you or joining mm-hmm. the Maui mm-hmm. Visitors mm-hmm. and Convention Bureau. I don't think it's even crossed their mind yeah, so it's, to uh, do yeah, that. It's a great way to do it. I think it's a very mm-hmm. good way of doing mm-hmm. it. I think it's a brilliant mm-hmm. idea to reach out that way. And uh, because, you know, you are a resource. Now, let's explain that Go Hawaii because, I, I mean, I really truly don't go often to the, uh-huh. the site. Uh-huh. And, I mean, this is amazing, too. And I, you see this, Kathy, all the time. Sometimes you're looking for something on in tourism and you get hijacked. And all of a sudden you see, like, 15 other things and you don't know which is the real place or which is the wrong place or which is the one you want to go to. And literally today... I was trying to do a little research on you, and I spent 15 minutes trying to figure out what was real and what was real and what was not and what was some Expedia. I mean, all these people are going, no, 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 I just want to go to the site. And I, it's hard to, and that's when again, we're travel agents like you. Yes, <laughs> it's but, very but helpful. <laughs> explain how people use the site, how they find out about the site, and how and people can understand how to work with you on that site. Right, I think the site, well, it's very, I know they've done a lot of work where people just, if you just Google, you know, Maui, it hopefully would come up that go Hawaii dot com would come up in their search and mm-hmm. if you go to it you're going to see all the islands listed and then you can just click on Maui or Molokai or Lanai and when you get to that then it goes to everything from accommodations to activities whether it's land sea uh, golf romance as we talked about before so it, it categorizes and it's pretty user friendly you know the way it, it scrolls down there's images and then there's also where you can subscribe um, or get, I should say, get our uh, vacation planner, you know, emailed or sent to you. So it's... Uh, what is the vacation planner? Explain so that. that's that a, it's like a booklet that describes all the different uh, facets, facets to the island uh, and what maybe what type of um, so vacation that you'd print. like to it's have. Mm-hmm. Print. It's print okay. and it, it's also you can get it online as well. But that... Just help someone. It's like I'm going to Maui for the first time. What is there to do? And in the back of it, there's a listing of all the partners. You know, whether you want to surf or where you want to dine. If you're getting married, you know, the wedding planners that you could work with. So Travel it's, agents. Yeah. So and mm-hmm. and can mm-hmm. people pay to be listed on there? Can businesses? So that's part of the membership that we oh, just talked is. about. Mm-hmm. Well, that's mm-hmm. very, very handy then. To be in there, correct. You found it? Th- mm-hmm. There's an app, because um, I have the oh, app, good. too. So oh, yes, you can get the app, the app too. on your f- mm-hmm. phone, and it has all the different islands. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, so it's it's pretty good. Oh, the other one thing I wanted to mention, too, about promoting is Ju- um, Julie Oniyama. Oh, yes. With the, the travel agents, and she's mm-hmm. always traveling and doing all these shows, and they take... Um, halal members and they do an excellent job of promoting with the travel agents and there's a um, course like a destination specialist so that the travel agents on the mainland can be knowledgeable about oh, what really? they're selling. Yep. I mm-hmm. was not now I heard of them you know because I've talked to people and I knew people were actually part of that group that go to all these places and they do a halal dance and everyone loves that of course yes. you know and <laughs> And they bring gifts, and they sometimes will have lays and things mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that, and everyone still loves that, you know. Um, so that's a huge part too. Now that's another yes. part of your office, right? Correct. So Julie is, as Kathy mentioned, is is our leisure sales manager or director, and she does. She's on the road probably forty weeks of the year. Whoa, going out, working woman. That one. yes, Whoa. very hard working. <laughs> that is unbelievable. And she brings, forty weeks, you know. Mm-hmm. Call, people from the islands you know whether it's halal or chef and and really helps to educate all these travel agents who Mm -hmm. in turn are able to sell Mm -hmm. you know maui what's the name of the app i forgot to ask that go hawaii go hawaii Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. folks did you hear that i'm gonna repeat it that's (laughs) no because this is new and i've been in this and i didn't even know about it go hawaii app and we all know people that are going to be coming and visiting here and this is really valuable for people to know about. Mm-hmm. And businesses listening, this is really a great tool to reach out to people who are going to come. I have people all the time saying, I want to reach visitors. It's like, yeah, you can go to Maui Visitors Bureau and become a member, and then you're listed on that site, mm-hmm. which is really mm-hmm. a, a wonderful way to reach visitors. Because visitors, 
do you keep track of how much money visitors spend? Um, is there, I mean, you know, expendable money outside hotels, what they actually spend when they're shopping? That's, you know, we have done a study um, of visa spending within Maui, which has been very interesting to see. Because we don't have, you can see that, correct, actually, we can see where all the trends are, whether it's on food or hotel or retail, uh, cars, whatnot. So that, that's been, we're just kind of in the beginning stages of looking at that and analyzing it, but Cause that's we do have that. Because that's very handy information, mm -hmm. isn't it? That's I very mean, helpful. I mean, some people I know say, gosh, you know, some of these people are just going and getting a condo and, and they're going shopping. Well, fine, they're going shopping. So what? Maybe they're going to a health food store, you know, mm -hmm. or Whole Foods, mm -hmm. or maybe they're going to Wayne Moons, or the going souvenirs. where they are. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and yeah, maybe they're not staying at a hotel. I mean, you know, the snowbirds are coming, and they're not necessarily you know, going to spend money mm -hmm. hotel. But that actually means more local money because they're going to be shopping at the mm -hmm. local stores for mm -hmm. things, right? And when they're shopping like that, they're probably getting sunglasses and maybe getting, you know, some clothes and things like that. And they're also bringing back some gifts, et cetera, you know. So that's a huge source right there as well, you know. So, I mean, it's, I can't even imagine how we, we can't, we could not survive without tourism. I mean, what percentage, I mean, I was reading about the taxes here and I was shocked how much money comes in <laughs> from taxes. He noted, let's see, state tax revenue from tourism was up 10.8% to $728.5 million in the first third of this year. $728.5 million, folks. I mean, that is important money. Yes, it is. You know, it supports a lot of what, you know, what, what the locals you know, survive on here. And, and the one thing that's really important, too, is to have good relations the aloha mm -hmm. spirit and little kindness we're famous for can go a long way because you never know where that one little post on Instagram or kindness done or someone goes and mm -hmm. tells someone else how nice the people were. That aloha spirit's really, really important, isn't it? It's a very precious thing. Oh, sure, and it's what brings people back. They take it back with them when they go home, and it's... Uh that's what brought my husband and I to Hawaii was really? we really felt the aloha spirit the first time we came together. Really? Yeah. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Mm -hmm. So that made mm -hmm. a huge impact on you. Huge. In what way did you experience that, that aloha spirit? It was, uh, well, when we first arrived, it, we uh, actually flew into Kona and stepped right on, you know, outside on the tarmac, yes. and I just sort of felt the warm air and I thought, okay, this is nice. But then when we eloped... Um, the uh, the people that basically helped us with our wedding just showed so much aloha spirit. I mean, ah. it was it was incredible. It was nothing we even asked for, and uh, so that's what really convinced us that this is where we needed to come live and and stay. And are you hearing this wedding coordinators? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> was, because uh, we cannot. It was amazing. You experience. can't discount that because mm -hmm. I mean, also what's important is when you step if you're going to a hotel how nice that person behind the counter is mm -hmm. or that person who opens the door of the valet, how nice the little things are or the person at the market you go to. You know, the little things like that, mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot discount. It makes a huge impression, and sometimes we may forget those things. Right. But some of those little, really kind things, letting in traffic, someone go in, not getting mad or yelling, or, I mean, all those little things go a super, super long way in making an impression and that's something I think all the people here have to be aware of. You know, local people, mm -hmm. you have to be aware of how nice you treat your visitors. You may <laughs> get annoyed sometimes by traffic <laughs> or things like that. But, no, it's, it's a huge it's true, it's yeah. a huge thing. Mm -hmm. and, and we can't survive without tourism. You know? <laughs> you know, so, and so it's really, really important that people feel like, yeah, I want to come back. You know, they come once, they want to come again. Mm -hmm. They feel like there's this warm, welcoming spirit, you know, that they're, they're, they're feeling at home here, and there's a good reason they want to come back. Because we mm -hmm. get a Maui quite a bit of return business, don't we? We do, yes, yes. I think all throughout all of Hawaii, but especially in Maui, a lot of people do. They'll, they'll leave, and they'll decide. They'll just they'll book their next trip right away. So when things happen like Kauai, of course, had that terrible flooding situation. I think that was in April, actually. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, the big gut. And when those other things happen, and you see this too, Kathy, do people then call you, Kathy, and say, gosh, I was going to go to Kauai, but there was this flood, or I was going to go to a big island. Can I come 
you know, to Maui instead? Do they do they think of the options when something happens? And is that is that something that you give an alternative to if they are nervous about one place? Sure. No, there's there's certainly those. You know, while we encourage them to obviously stick with their plans to Kauai or mm-hmm. Island of Hawaii, there's certainly um, give them options on going coming here to Maui or Molokai or Lanai instead if that gives them a little more peace of mind. Mm-hmm. You said you saw someone who actually called you. They were thinking of coming in, was it December? That's I have a bride coming in September, and she was worried about the volcano. I said no. But we actually had a, a honeymoon couple who just came and left, and they went to Kauai. They were coming to Kauai, and then they went to the Big Island. They were hitting all the, the hot spots. <laughs> the and, island hopping. <laughs> yeah, but and they were kind of, they were not They were fine. They, they just mm-hmm. said, no, we're coming, and they had a perfect time on every single island that they came to. Well, so. we, we could talk forever, but we're out of time. But I want to remind you to call Kathy Degushi at Captivating Journeys, 244-1414. Go, you can go to the website as well. Mm-hmm. CaptivatingJourneys.com. Yay. And we have a special page for Maui if you want to uh, find more information about Maui. And you can go uh, the Maui Visitors Convention Bureau has uh, visitmauiblog.com, facebook.com, visit Maui, twitter.com, Maui Visit, and Go Hawaii. Yes. Go Hawaii mm-hmm. as well. Uh, it's it's so nice of you to come, and I really learned a lot. It's great to meet you. Oh, likewise. Yeah, yeah. it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, and a big aloha to Thanks, you. Thanks, <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>